This video is about using for loops in R to repeat things, but using an index to loop over instead of looping over the values directly. In the last video, we saw that loops in R iterate over a series of values in a vector or other list-like object. When we use that value directly, like we did last time, this is called looping by value. But there's another way to loop or work with loops, which is called looping by index. And the looping by index loops over a list of integer index values, typically starting at 1. And these integers are then used to access the values that we need from one or more vectors at the position indicated by the index. So let's take a look at this by writing the same loop that we did last time, uh, but using an index instead. And so we'll start by creating our vector that we're going to loop over. That's called volumes. And we had uh, the numbers 1.6, 3, and 8 in it. And now we want to write our for loop. And this starts in the same way uh, as it did last time. So for parentheses. And now we need that variable that's going to get updated for every trip through the loop. And in this case, we're going to call that i. This is a standard usage. It's short for index. Uh, and so it's common to use i in this case if we're only looping over one thing. And then in, just like before. And now we need the vector of values that we're going to loop over. And in this case, we're going to create a vector of these position values, one for each position in volumes. So we want one, two, and three, because those are the positions. And we can do this using the colon. And so if you'll remember, if we put one colon three, that would give us the numbers one, two, and three in a vector. And so we're gonna keep the one colon because we know we wanna start at one and go through some number uh, but I don't want to have to know how long the volumes vector is uh, in order to create code because uh, it might be really long and it might change the next time I run the code. And so instead of putting three here, we're going to put the length of our volumes vector and we're going to figure that out using the length function. And so we'll do the length of volumes. And so now, regardless of how long this object is, we'll get something, uh, a vector starting at number one and incrementing by one up to the length of whatever the thing is that we're looping over. And then we'll add our curly brackets and then type the body of our loop. And so we'll say mass is assigned the value of 2.65 times and last time we had the actual value to work with. But now uh, we don't have that anymore. We just have i, which is either one, two, or three in our case. So we don't wanna do math on this. We wanna do it on the volumes vector at the appropriate position. And so we'll say volumes, and then we'll use square brackets and i to get the value from volumes at the ith position, and then raise that to the 0 0.9. And then we'll print out the mass. And so let's go ahead and run this. And we'll see that we get the same results as before. And the way this code executes is that it starts by creating a vector with the numbers one, two, and three here. The first time through the loop, it takes the first value from that vector, which is one, 
and assigns it to the variable i. It then goes down to the next line and it sees that it needs the ith value from the volumes vector. And so it goes up here, it finds the first value based on position, brings that value back here, does this calculation and prints it out. Then gets down to the bottom of the loop, comes back up, gets the second value out of this vector, which is two, assigns it to i, so i is now two, and then it looks up the value from volumes in the second position, which is the number three. That gets put down here, and then this calculation gets done and printed out. And then it does this one more time, getting the value three from this vector, assigning it to i, looking up volumes at the third position, which is eight, doing this calculation and printing it to the screen. Okay, so this gives us the same result, but it's quite a bit more complicated to think about and understand. So why would we loop by index? The advantage of looping by index is that it lets us do more complicated things than we can just looping by value. And one of the most common things that we use this for is storing the results that we calculated in a loop. So far, we've printed them out, but we don't really just want to print results like this. We want to be able to store them for later. And to do this, we start by creating an empty object that is the same length as our expected results are. And then we store the results in that empty object as we go through the loop. So let's take a look at what that would look like by modifying our current loop. First, we need to create our empty object. And so I'll call this masses, because that's what we're calculating. And we can store things in a variety of different kinds of objects, but we'll start with a vector. And so to make an empty vector, we'll use the vector command. And the key argument to the vector command is uh, the argument length. And so we'll say length is equal to, and then it's basically saying, how big of an empty vector do you want me to give you? In this case, we want one that is three long, but again, we don't want to hard code the number three in here because we don't know if volumes might change. And so we'll say, make it the length of the volumes vector. So this will give us an empty vector of masses that is the same length as the volumes vector. And if we go ahead and run that line of code, and look at masses, we can see that it's a vector of length three. And because we haven't told it what type of data we're putting in there, it's set it to the logical type. So it can only hold true and false. And by default, it's stored false values at each position in the vector. We're not working with logical values. We're going to be working with numeric values. Uh, the good news is if we add a numeric value to this vector, R will automatically convert its type to numeric. Or we can optionally tell the vector function what type we're using up front. And so we could say mode, that's how we're going to tell it the type, is equal to, and then quotes, and the word numeric. And if we do that, we'll see that we now have a numeric vector that is three spaces long, and it's set those values to start with to zero, and then we'll replace them to store our results. Okay, so we've got our empty vector for storing things. Now we need to store them as we go through the for loop. 
And so we'll go ahead and stop printing mass and store it instead. And the way that we do this is we're going to store our result into the masses vector. And then we need to tell our where in the masses vector to put the result from this trip through the loop. And so we'll use square brackets and our position index. And then we'll assign that the value of mass. And so this says on our first trip through the loop, store the results in the first position in masses. On our second trip through the loop, store the result in the second position in masses. And then on our third trip through the loop, store a result in the third position in masses. And so if we run this, we'll see we've got all zeros in masses over here to start. And after running that code, we now have our three results stored in the appropriate positions in masses. The last thing I'm going to do is step through this code using the debugger like we've seen before so that we can understand uh, precisely what's happening. I'm going to go ahead and clear out these objects so they're not there to start with. And then I'm going to set a debug point here, but I need to save the file first. And now I'll set a debug point here. And we'll go ahead and source. All right. So now we're going to step to the next line in our code, and that'll run line one. And so that just created our vector. And then we run this line to create our empty vector for storing our results in. And now we get to the for loop. The, we can see that the first step in the for loop is to assign the number 1 to the value i. This L here just tells us this is an integer. It then uses that number to look up volumes at the first position and do this calculation and store it in the variable mass. And then when we run this last line, that value will get stored in here in our masses vector. We then go back to the top of the loop. We assign the next value in our index vector to i, and so that's now the value of 2. The code then uses that value to look up the volumes value at the second position and do this calculation and then it updates mass. We still haven't stored that mass yet because we do that when we run line 5. And so this is now going to store this mass we just calculated in position 2 of the masses vector. So it should show up right here. And there it is. And then it heads back to the beginning of the loop again, assigns the next index value to i. So it's now 3 then uses that to look up this volume and do this calculation. So we now have the mass for this loop is 17.2. And then the final line will store that at the third position in the masses vector over here, replacing the zero. And there are no more values, and so then the loop finishes executing. So that's the idea about looping by index. Instead of looping over the values that we want to work with, we loop over a position index that typically starts at 1 and goes through uh, the maximum number of steps that we want to take, which in this case is the length of the vector that we're doing something to. We then use that index to look up the values that we need from the vector that we're working on as we go. 
And we can then also use that index to store the results into an empty object, which in this case, we're using an empty vector, which we create using the vector function. So I was just sitting here editing the last video and uh, Morgan Ernest, my uh, partner and uh, fellow uh, UF professor, walked in, looked at what I was doing, looked at my hair, and then walked out again. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it as much as she is.